As the hair follicle becomes suppressed by DHT, it grows and sheds at a progressive rate. The only way to slow down, stop, and if the damage to the hair follicle isn't too extreme, potentially reverse this miniaturization process in androgenetic alopecia would be to use a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor like dutastride and finasteride. So how would dutastride or finasteride help? Well, we need to look at a very special study conducted on finasteride and the benefits it and potentially other 5-alpha reductase inhibitors have on androgenetic alopecia. Please pay attention because in this section we are going to talk about some key concepts that involve the hair cycle and a phenomenon known as synchronized shedding. In the study titled, quote, Long-term, five-year, multinational experience with finasteride 1 mg in the treatment of men with androgenetic alopecia, unquote, published in the European Journal of Dermatology, Kaufman and colleagues looked into the long-term efficacy and safety of finasteride at 1 mg a day in treating men with androgenetic alopecia over five years. The study combined data from two phase three trials involving more than 1,500 men with male pattern hair loss. Over five years, men who consistently took finasteride experienced a significant increase in hair count compared to baseline, reaching a peak at 12 months. Although the improvement slightly decreased afterward, it remained consistently higher than the starting level, resulting in an average increase of 38 hairs in the designated target area by the end of the study. Men on finasteride also demonstrated noticeable improvements in patient self-assessment scores, investigator ratings, and global photographic assessments. In contrast, men who received a placebo experienced a steady decline in hair count, culminating in an average loss of 239 hairs, in the same area over five years. Finasteride's effectiveness appeared to peak after one to two years of treatment within the confines of the five-year study. In other words, research shows that finasteride increases the number of hairs in the growth phase, an antigen, and normalizes the balance between growth and resting phases. This effect is similar to releasing a break, letting hair follicles grow freely without the inhibitory influence of DHT. The authors make a statement, though, in the discussion section of the paper. They say, quote, Based on the predefined endpoints utilizing photographic methods, hair counts, and global photographic assessment, peak efficacy was observed at one to two years of treatment with finasteride. This observation of an apparent peaking effect is likely due, in part, to the previously reported beneficial effects of finasteride on the hair growth cycle, based on a phototrichogram study. In that study, initiation of finasteride treatment was shown to increase the number of antigen phase hairs and to increase the antigen to telogen ratio, consistent with normalization of the growth cycles of previously miniaturized hairs due to the release of hair follicles from the inhibitory effects of DHT. Consistent with these results, finasteride treatment was also shown to increase the growth rate and or thickness of hairs based on analysis of serial hair weight measurement. Because these beneficial changes in the hair growth cycle are dependent on when therapy with finasteride is initiated and occur rapidly, the affected hairs are driven to cycle in a synchronous manner. If these hairs have somewhat similar antigen phase durations, they would enter telogen phase as the antigen and catagen phase ended, followed by subsequent shedding in a partially synchronized fashion. This would be expected to produce a gradual decline from peak hair count after a period of time equal to the average antigen phase duration. Eventually, as subsequent growth cycles recurred, these hairs would be expected to become increasingly independent, thereby losing their synchronous character as their growth cycles further normalize over time, leading to a sustained increase in hair count at a plateau above baseline as suggested by the five-year data presented here." Unquote. Initially, the treated hairs grow and shed and sink due to this sudden release by 5-alpha reductase inhibition and thus from DHT suppression. As their growth cycles normalize over time, hair from hair follicles desynchronize and shedding decreases, leading to a stable hair count above baseline. However, there will be periods of growth and shedding where the count fluctuates above and below baseline, 
it's like all the hairs initially marching in sync but eventually finding their individual rhythms as they adapt to the new growth pattern. It's likely that a higher percentage reduction in DHT causes greater synchronization as the overall interaction between DHT and hair follicles diminishes. For example, the 2006 Olson and colleagues study on dutastride showed a decrease in scalp DHT of 50% to around 80% at doses of 0.5 mg up to 2.5 mg. A similar shedding pattern may occur with strong treatments. That being said, how the follicles synchronize also depend on which stage the hair follicles are currently in. Let's make some things clear here. Shedding can occur when you start treatment, and it can even delay for a whole year. The truth is, no one can tell you how long it will take for your shedding to subside. You even have your natural shedding that occurs on hairs that are more DHT resistant. Furthermore, other scalp conditions such as telogen effluvium and even different forms of alopecia may influence how you shed hairs. So, if you're asking for a time frame for when your shedding will stop, this is an impossible task due to the different genetics and environmental circumstances one may be going through. The best thing to do would be to stay on your hair loss treatment stack. Don't remove and add things too frequently. People typically do this when they want to see results as soon as possible. This is faulty thinking and could also cause increased shedding. People also need to temper their expectations and be realistic. If you started late on treatment and you're a Norwood 5, don't expect to get to a Norwood 3. Even if you see people on the internet making such improvements, they are outliers.